Okay, so for this one, we're looking at part B from problem 26. I'm just going to scroll back up so we can kind of see what the problem looked like. So problem 26, we have this triangle here. Um, so we're trying to find the curl uh, dot ds for this problem. Okay, so we're going to first find this curl operation, and then we're going to dot with ds and then look at our bounds. So curl first. Okay. So I have a pre-solved out a curl equation here. Um, f is just any vector, so we're, we're popping in a for f over here. Um, so anytime you see these f of x, f of y, f of z, we're talking about a. Um, so we just took this pre-solved out equation. This is just like linear algebra, um, and you're, you can go ahead and solve this one out yourself, but just for the sake of time, I don't want these videos to be too tedious. Um, okay, so um, this is our a given by the problem. I also just threw in this, uh, the y component is zero here. So, or I'm sorry, the z component is zero. The z component is zero. Okay, so we're gonna cancel all, all of our z's here. So this part is equal to zero, right? This part is equal to zero. So this is the partial of the magnitude of f of z uh, with respect to, well, y and x here. Uh, so those are equal to zero. Now we're gonna look at these kind of separately here. So we have the partial of the magnitude of f of y with respect to z. So let's look at our f of y component. So this is f of y, right? Uh, the magnitude in the y direction, and then we have, this is f of x, the magnitude in the x direction, technically a of x and a of y, but we're um, just gonna reference them in terms of our equation here. Uh, okay, so this is the partial with respect to z. We have no z component in, in this piece here, right? There's no z component, so this is gonna equal zero. Uh, it's like if you I was doing d over dz of um, 3 is equal to 0. Uh, it's because we're just basically taking the derivative of a constant. We're treating anything that's not the variable that we're interested in as a constant. Okay, so this piece right here, uh, derivative of f of x with respect to z. This piece right here, uh, again, we have no z component, so this is the derivative of a constant. Uh, this piece over here, um, we do have... Um, a derivative with respect to x and y, we do have these pieces, so we're going to keep and solve out that last uh, z cat component there. So we're just plugging in what we have. So I'm going to plug in the magnitude of um, the y component, f of y, uh, in the equation. So I'll, I'll write these guys out actually first here. So here, so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, sorry, minus, minus the magnitude of. Uh, f of x with respect to y in the z hat component. Okay, so we have f of y, so let's put that in. Uh, x, y minus y squared. Wait, is that the right one? Yes. Yeah, x, y minus y squared. And then 2x squared plus y squared. And we can see that this is, um, this is our f of x here, even though it's a, not a very high quality image there. Uh, this is our f of x, f of x, this is our f of y. Okay, let's go ahead and solve that. Um, okay, so our, um, so this will go to zero because it's treated this constant here. Uh, and then we're going to end up with the derivative with respect to x, right? Uh, so we have y, because y's are constant. Uh, so it'd be like the derivative with respect to 3x is 3. Okay with respect to y, so what do we got here? So this is going to be treated as constant, goes to zero. Uh, then we have the derivative with respect to y of 2 of y squared, so uh, 2y. So y minus 2y in the z hat direction, so we end up with a negative y in the z hat direction. Okay, so that's our del cross a. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and set up our integral next. So our ds for this surface um, we have a change in x and change in y, so um, it's a 2D surface, so our, we have the differential surface, uh, those two changes, and then z is our normal vector to that surface just coming out. So we're going to use that in our equation here. So, so plugging in our curl from here. And then we have dx, dy, in the z hat direction. Um, okay, so z hat dot z hat equals one. Uh, so these directional unit vectors dotted with themselves is equal to one. And then like z hat dot y hat 
equal zero. If they're perpendicular and you dot them, it's equal to zero. Um, okay, so negative y dx dy. Okay, so now we need to find our bounds. So this actually is where things get a little weird um, because we're looking for the bounds for our shape, right? And one of the sides of our shape it has a um, rate of change. So we need to model it uh, in either x or y. We need like a rate of change of one with respect to the other. Um, so the bounds for these are going to get a little weird. I'm going to do the bounds first, um, and then I'm going to explain why that is the case. Okay, so these are our bounds. Uh, this one's for y, and this is equal to our general expression. And we're going to look at our shape really quick. I don't think looking at the shape really helps all that much for this one. You kind of just have to um, sort of like sit with this one and think about it a little bit. Okay, so we're going to from uh, 0 to uh, 2 minus x, right? Because this one, we're just looking at our ds, so we're looking at the, the bounds for our ds here. We're not taking this into the directional part into account for this one. So 0 to um, 2 minus x, so we're taking in this rate of change line and then zero to two for one of the sides. So one of these um, dx or dy would have to take this into account, so we're just choosing dy here. Um, so then we can integrate the result of dy in terms of x. So you'll see that. We'll just go ahead and solve it, and then maybe this one will be a little clearer as we keep going. Okay, so internal part first, right? y squared over two, zero to two minus x. Okay, and we still have this integral of um, with respect to x. So two minus x, squared uh, over 2 minus 0, right, to top bounds, bottom bounds. And let's go ahead and expand uh, those terms there. Uh, and just for the, so 2, oh, sorry, 2 minus x, so 2 minus x, so times 4 minus 4x four plus x squared. So 2 minus 2x plus 1 half x squared uh, dx. And we're going from 0 to 2. Okay, so 2x, we're just going ahead and integrating here. 2x squared over 2 um, and plus 1 half. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, this would be yep, 1 half x to the third over 3. Okay, and the solution here, we are going from 0 to 2 for x. So we're going to assume that we have our first part and then just minus 0 for the bottom bounds. So 2 times 2 minus 2 times 2 squared over 2. So that would be 4 minus 8 over 2. This will, uh, I don't know where we are here, but add a page. Um, then we're going to go ahead and cancel uh, for minus 8 squared. Uh, and then we have minus, so it's just 4 minus 4, 1 half times 2 to the third over 3. Uh, it's going to be equal to, uh, we have 8 over 6, minus 8 over 6, which equals minus 4 thirds. All right, so after solving for this, we can see that part B, which is the flux of the curl, or the right-hand side of the Stokes theorem, the flux of the curl is equal to this first part here, which is this a dot dl, so the line integral of the vector field over a loop. So therefore, we have a, is equal to b, and we prove the Stokes theorem.